So class, very good evening. Uh, so yesterday we are done with the part of your very nicely related to your microscopes, staining, uh, how to stain your things. And today we will be dealing with the animal cell culture that how we make cell culture work done so we will discuss uh, everything uh, related to that
so those who have i think most of you have subscribed who so are present otherwise rest please subscribe to channel also so it's been so far the journey has been to 849 so who going to be 850 let's see i have to change the date so happy ram navmi today is ram navmi and navratri so lots of blessing from mata durga and jai shri ram that their blessings keep us away from the this pandemic that we are going through again in this year and things get better for all of us so let's come to the study point now with the animal cell culture so i will share basically how you make animal cell culture working how things are working in that so let's start so some brief history of animal cell culture that in 1885 rocks maintain the embryonic chick cells alive in saline solution for a short length of time the 1912 alexis carroll cultured connective tissues and showed some heart muscles tissue contractility over 2 to 3 months <coughs> and 1943 produced continuous red cell line early at all and in 62 uh, comes the bion icc uh, which published methods for maintaining differentiated cells then in 1970s uh, gordon sato at all published specific growth factors and media required for the many cell types the 1979 um botenstein and sato defined uh, the serum free media for neural cells then 89 1980 to till now tissue culture becomes uh, less of an experimental search will more of widely accepted research tool so it's not more any more like uh, basically done for experimental research but it is done for the sake of the research tools that we are looking for so some of the applications of cell culture techniques it helps to study of cell behavior <coughs> uh without variants that occur in animals um is characterized helps in the cell maintain over several generations leading to good uh, producibility between experiments uh culture can be exposed to many reagents radiochemical or drugs at defined concentration for specific time to understand the things uh, how they are working the molecular biology uh some of the limitations are that we have to develop some standardized techniques in order to maintain healthy reproducible cells for experiments and it takes times to learn aseptic techniques also it doesn't come within a day so you for me to be regular with the cell culture it took me one month to be professional with, with it so that i do not do any mis do any mistake do not do any contamination on uh, yeah things are fine with it then quantity of material is limited and cost of media and maintenance of cell line has to be maintained in that part then terminology um so a three dimensional culture of a uh, undisaggregated tissue retain uh, some or of the features of the tissue in the vivo and the cell culture single single cells are no longer associated as tissues derived from the dispersed cells taken from the original tissues and uh, derived from an explant directly from the animal is usually only survive for a finite period of time involves enzymatic or mechanical disruption of the tissue and some selection steps to isolate the cells of interest from the heterogeneous population so some safety level has to be taken care with the mutagens uh, possibly no carcinogen should be there um whenever you are working with cell culture make sure that you are wearing your gloves uh, cleaning everything with 70% ethanol 
uh, terminating it with the UV light so everything is maintained nicely so some of the safety measures use of cell culture area the cell culture area is any other laboratory is a working area so you do not bring your friends uh, in with you in that part do not drink or smoke in that area do not use mobile phone also do wear your lab coats while doing your cell culture and <clears throat> do not re reuse your gloves because your sweat and uh, most of your particles will be within your gloves and <clears throat> yeah then after wearing the lab coat and gloves do not wear uh, move in the corridors so that uh, it, it not should not take your germs what are the microbes that the labs in your present that you're taking them outside <clears throat> so some basics uh, equipments uh, we need horizontal laminar flow cabinets uh, which provides a sterile environment to the cells uh, but no offer to the protection of the operator who is working on the bench <coughs> and filtered air centers at the back of the cabinet and is directed to the front directly to the operator uh, further your centrifuge has to be sterile uh, human drive cells must be centrifuge also so things has to be very taken care of before doing experiments uh, microorganisms could grow 10 to 50 times faster than the mammalian cells so which take times around 8 to 16 hours to divide and they are mostly tolerant to variations in temperature pH and nutrients supplied in the cells and cells are the most vulnerable to contaminations whenever the aseptic technique is, is, is being used there and mycoplasma is one of the uh, the most common uh, cell culture contaminant so when we were doing experiments so mycoplasma, mycoplasma test we used to do this regularly after two or three weeks and we tend to find them in our cell culture because this is yeah so if, even though if your cell culture should look so plain but somehow people do not do the right way of your cell culture and leads to the when you put your cell culture within the uh, incubator overnight which makes all other cell culture being wasted out then how can you isolate your cell lines for in vitro culture first you resected your tissue then you get this uh, cell or tissue culture in vitro make a primary culture make a subculture of secondary then make cell lines either they could go for single cell isolations um, immortalizations or successive subcultures um, then in the single cell isolations they could go for clonal cell line uh, in the case of immortalization you can make immortalized cell lines so they can we can transform your cell line otherwise they could go for senescence for long time so there are type of cell cultured in vitro primary secondary so in the primary they are directly derived from the animal tissue that is from embryo or adult cultured either as a tissue or explants or single cells initially heterogeneous become an overpopulated with fibroblast finite lifespan is required retain a differentiated phenotype mainly encourage dependent and exhibit contact inhibition further in the secondary culture derived from the primary cell culture isolated by selection or cloning become more homogeneous cell population finite lifespan in vitro retain differentiated phenotype mainly anchor dependent and exhibit contact inhibition and types of cell culture in vitro um, then uh, we are done with the primary secondary then there is a continuous culture which is derived from a primary or secondary culture and this they are immortalized spontaneously or by transformating factors and they are seriously propagated in culture showing an increased growth rate uh, moreover loss of encourage dependency and contact inhibition is as seen in it and they are genetically quite unstable too so here we can see four different type of cell lines the cell morphologies depending upon your cell types on the top left uh, corner is the fibroblast then the right to it is epithelial and the bottom left is endothelial and then the right is neuronal so fibroblastic cells look like cylindrical long ones 
whereas the epithelials they are, they are in the group together endothelials also look like this you can see very nicely grouping together having the nucleus in the center long one and the neuronal are the one with the shiny one here making a brain network like a network so uh, even I, I worked in, in my case I worked with the primary cardiomyocytes we were extracting hearts from the three day born uh, rats and they used to beat actually after three or four days so that's how different cell cultures have different morphologies depending upon the cell types and the different media is required different nutrient is required different kind of atmosphere is required different pH is required so for each uh, there's specific protocol to grow them uh, in their conditions so we have discussed so far primary uh, uh, tissue culture in which you have normal cell culture without any change in their uh, division rate then there is a continuous with finite and indefinite in the finite single cell types uh, roughly 30 times of divisions announced by growth factors and the indefinite is, a, is a nearly the same as finite but the cells here can divide indefinitely by transformation into tumor cells then there are many types of cell culture according to the cultivation period so there is primary as we have discussed continuous that's the same thing that we have just discussed now moreover this is the morura stem cells types how the stem cell culture is being done then it makes a blastocyst. from there we get the inner mass cell from this you can make embryonic stem cell culture then from embryonic stem cell culture that you can go for muscles blood neuronal intestinal pancreatic liver <coughs> whatever the cell programming you do they will form that cell type so that's the beauty of cell culture here especially with the embryonic stem cells so stem cells have ability to self replicate and also differentiate into a multitude of different cell types uh, needed within the body they could go for self renewal uh, making pluripotent, uh, pluripotent stem cells or they could go for differentiation within differentiation they could go for three uh, dermatology is there in the cell that is mesoderm, endoderm and ectoderm so in mesoderm they could go for red RBCs, cardiac muscles, skeletal muscles endoderm they could go for pancreatic, lung or thyroid cells whereas in ectoderm they could for, go for skin cells, neurons and pigment cells so in this way you can have different uh, cell types according to its different types of um, things same thing have been repeated here like different cell culture will produce different RBCs, neutrophil, basophils. Um, so degree of transformation, um, this is for the urotosa uh, cells, 6 months and degree of epigenetic changes. <coughs> Initially they are immortal, then the faster growth and they become tumorigenic in the mice later on. <coughs> Then cell culture environment, uh, how it should be for the basic growth of a cell growth. <coughs> so it should be substrate or liquid, chemically modified plastic or coated with ECM proteins or suspension culture. Then you should have nutrients with culture medium. Environment has to maintain inside the chamber with carbon dioxide temperature and humidity. Um, then sterility has to be there, aseptic techniques, antibiotics, antimyositics has to be added into your samples. I have a regular check of mycoplasma also. So this is the very basics uh, for the cell culture environment in vitro if you are growing. These are the bottles that you get from the market. They are a bit expensive because they are ready made media for you uh, shown in the red color. So these are the basal medias which maintain have pH and osmolarity and they provide nutrients and energy source to your cells. So what are the components of a basal media? Uh, it basically includes inorga inorganic salts uh, which maintain the osmolarity, uh, maintain your membrane potential and also the cell attachment enzyme cofactor. So everything is being there. Then this phenol red color that you're seeing, it means the pH is approximately neutral, that is pH 7.4. And there are some buffers are also added like bicarbonate and HEPAS. Bicarbonate buffered a media requires carbon dioxide atmosphere, whereas HEPAS is a strong chemical um, range pH of 7.2 7.6. 
and does not require carbon dioxide and also we add glucose uh, it has glucose in it uh, which is the main energy source so mainly in organic salts pH phenol red indicator buffers and glucose are part of it and beyond that there's also ket uh, keto acids carbohydrates vitamins trace elements so all these are quite important for the production of your cell culture and then there's some supplements are also added into your cell culture into your medium so they mostly come in the frozen form uh, we just put them in the water bath for few minutes for like maybe half an hour or so and then when they're in the liquid form then we mix them in our culture medium in our basal medium so what are the supplements it could be l-glutamine non-essential amino acids growth factors and hormones and antibiotics and antimyositics so l-glutamine is essential amino acid energy source for citric acid cycles in the protein synthesis and added as supplements and the non essential amino acids and EAAA uh, they are the one used for the basics media compositions uh, energy source used in the protein synthesis and may reduce metabolic burden on the cells further the growth factor and hormones their examples are insulin stimulate glucose transport and utilizations uptake of amino acids and maintenance of differentiation and uh, into that also for the antibiotics we can use penicillin, streptomycin, gentamicin, amphotericin B which reduce the risk of bacteria and fungal contamination and cells become antibiotic resistance uh, changing phenotype prefer preferably avoided in long term culture Then cell culture environment, um, also required some amount of fetal calf bovine serum. You might be saying that, that we are, uh, in, in order to maintain your culture media, um, it's not easy, no? Yeah, it is possible that's why the stem cell culture part is, is very famous uh, quite in nowadays so my point here is um, uh, is to say that in the cell culture media it's not just a few media or, or organic solvents in organic solvents we required it's a whole bunch of uh, sciences behind in order to maintain your cell culture it's just not within one day so it's many scientists who have worked uh, and standardize the pattern that if you want to grow this kind of media then you require these these things uh, in order to grow your uh, cell culture so that's why inorganic salts pH indicator buffers glucose your keto acids carbohydrates vitamins trace elements they are already being put up if you check the recipe like ingredients of that media they will be in then on top we add the supplements like glutamine and EAA uh, growth factors antibiotics and also we also add FCS and FBS which is your fetal calf or bovine serum which act as a growth factor in hormones and aid cell attachment and utilize your toxins and been used for quite a number of times before so you know we need to heat inactivate this FCS FBS by keeping them at 56 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes so that the complement and immunoglobins are destroyed and some viruses if they are present they could be destroyed in that but if we overdo this heating we can uh, damage some growth factors hormones and vitamins which uh, will affect the cell growth so there are many things you have to be taken care of while doing your cell culture so that's why I said this doesn't come within one day or single day it takes some months or some four people maybe in one or two weeks they learn it and they start producing results uh, as fast as possible so how do we uh, culture cells in the laboratory how do we do it so in order to revive frozen uh, cell population isolate from the tissue you maintain in the culture aseptic technique and then subculture passaging is very important and then cryopreservation you preserve them with the mr frosty at uh, in minus degrees minus 20 degrees celsius 
So this is the contaminant level cell culture laboratory here you can see and the typical cell culture flask looks like this and this is the Mr. Frosty used to freeze cells. Uh, in future, I don't know, many of you might be doing them on a regular basis, but some of you might be not doing for them. It's uh, just an in introduction to cell culture lab, how, how everything works there. So what is passaging of the cells? Basically, passaging means to maintain cells in culture so that they do not overgrow. Because if they keep overgrowing, they will start producing toxin, uh, toxics toxins uh, within the cell medium and they start to die. So how do we check this? How do we passage them? We see if the confluency is around 70 to 80 percent like this in this case. And then we wash them with PBS to remove the dead cells and serum. And then we add trypsin in order to uh, remove them from the cell surface from the bottom of your flask. Then EDTA is also added to enhance the trypsin activity. Then we resuspend in the serum and then transfer dilute cell suspension to new flask and most cell lines will adhere in a, a prox 3 to 4 hours again. So we check confluency, remove spent medium, wash with PBS, incubate with trips in EDTA, then resuspend in the serum containing media and then transfer to your culture flask. So that's how you do the passaging of cells. So let's watch one video, how do we passage your cells? For five minutes video. The growth of cells in culture follows a standard pattern. A leg after seeding is followed by a period of exponential growth called the log phase. Cells should be passaged when they cover the plate, or the cell density exceeds the capacity of the medium. Maintaining log phase growth will maximize the number of healthy cells for your experiment. Before retrieving your flasks from the incubator, sterilize the hood and have all required supplies at hand. Examine your culture carefully for signs of contamination or deterioration. Handle the cells with care during transport. For adherent cells, remove the spent medium from the flask using a sterile pipette. Rinse the cells with a balanced salt solution such as DPPS. Make sure to use a salt solution without calcium and magnesium as these may inhibit your cell dissociation reagent. After rinsing the cells, remove the salt solution. Each time you aspirate liquid off the cells, place the next solution on quickly. Add your cell dissociation reagent to remove cells from the plate. Use just enough solution to cover the cell sheet. Consider using a gentle dissociation reagent, such as Triple Express, to avoid damaging your cells during dissociation. Make sure that the solution completely covers the cells. You may want to tap gently on the plate to help the cells detach. Use a microscope to confirm the cells have released from the flask. They will start to appear round as they release from the substrate and will move or slide when the flask is tilted. Complete dissociation is necessary. Do not leave the dissociation reagent on too long, especially if you are using a reagent other than triple. You may choose to manually break up lingering clumps by repeatedly pipetting warmed medium over them. A single cell suspension is important to achieve an accurate cell count. If you are using trypsin, the collection medium will need serum, or you'll need to use a trypsin inhibitor to inactivate the trypsin. If you're using triple, inactivation is achieved by dilution alone. No serum is needed. Transfer the cells to a conical tube and centrifuge to remove any residual dissociation reagent. The speed and time of centrifugation will vary based on your cell type. After centrifugation, you should have a well-formed pellet. Remove the medium from the centrifuge tube with a pipette and discard the medium into a waste container. Try not to disturb the pellet. Resuspend the pellet with warm, complete growth medium. 
Gentle pipetting will disperse the cells to ensure a homogeneous solution of single cells. Remove a small sample for cell counting. Tripan blue is used when counting cells to indicate the ratio of live to dead cells. The stain turns dead cells blue, but healthy cells with an intact membrane will remain white or colorless. Using the microscope, count the total number of cells and the number of dead or blue cells. Based on your cell count, determine how much additional fresh medium to add for optimal seeding density. Add the required medium, mix the cells gently, and pipette the solution into fresh flasks. Cap the vented caps on your flask tightly. If the caps are not vented, cap loosely. This keeps contamination out while allowing adequate gas exchange. Use a north-south, east-west motion to evenly distribute the cells and transport the flasks to the incubator. <coughs> When passaging suspension cells, you'll begin by removing a small sample from the cell culture flask for counting. You'll follow the same counting procedure for adherent cells using Tripan Blue and either a hemocytometer or the Countess automated cell counter. Based on your cell count, add additional fresh medium to the flasks. Stay within the minimum and maximum volumes. This is important to maintain optimal air exchange and shaking flow. You may need to split the culture into multiple flasks. Cap the flasks appropriately, depending upon whether they are vented or not, and return them to the incubator. Every three weeks, gently spin the cells, remove the medium, and replace with completely new medium. This eliminates cell debris and metabolic waste. So that was a normal way of passaging your cells, which is very, very uh, important. So I will share this video. So we are done with this part of the basics, uh, the medium, the passaging, then how we do the cryopreservation. preservation. In the cryopreservation, preservation, we just take the passage cells, then resuspend cells in the serum containing media, and then centrifuge and aspirate the supranatant. Then resuspend cells in the 10% DMSO and FCS, then transfer to the cryovial, freeze to the minus 80 degrees Celsius, then transfer to liquid nitrogen for storage tank. So why we do cryopreserve preserve because this will reduce the risk of microbial contaminations uh, or any cross contamination with other cell lines, uh, morphological changes will be stopped and we will have consistent low passage rate uh, by doing so. So log phase of growth uh, and it's a more than 90% viability is there and uh, <clears throat> the freeze at minus 80 degrees Celsius uh, yet slow freezing liquid nitrogen in minus 198 one minus minus one ninety six, and then the cryopreservant precise mechanisms unknown but prevents ice crystals formation. So manual cell count is here. We can see that uh, count cells. Uh, this is the hematocytometer, so in which we count the cells that how many cells are present in order to dilute your cells, because we don't want cells to be overgrown in your cell culture tube. So we add less cells or to sell your can uh, cell count average cell of number then multiply by the dilution factor and then multiply by 10,000. So this is the diagram that represents the hematocytometer. What you do is you count these four, uh, four different uh, cells on the corners and then you take the average. So this is your average cell number. 
and there are also automated cell count chambers available in the market uh, which will according to the cell morphology they will count your cells automatically for you so what is the ideal growth curve of cell in the culture how does your cells grows actually uh, in your in your cell uh, growth so first uh, you have your lag period here then you have exponential phase uh, then you have stable plateau for some time and then it could go either linear or it will st if it is unstable plateau they will decline so here uh, at the first point the cells per ml uh, at the fourth day uh, before the fourth day uh, you have a population doubling time, PDT. Uh, from X, it's become 2X within the 4 to 5 days. So these are cells per uh, centimeter cent century square, and that's how your proper cell growth is done. So there are some contaminations is possible also, which could have adverse effect on cell culture. Uh, these are viruses, mycoplasma, cross contaminations, biological contaminations, chemical contaminations, media incubators, serum, water. So all these are the reasons for the contaminations. So how, how can we control these contaminations? Uh, we can do it with the help of good aseptic technique, strategic use of antibiotics, strategic use of cell uh, repository, uh, good housekeeping by everyone, understanding the nature of contaminations, and contam contaminations monitoring program. So all these things could maintain that. This is how uh, human embryonic stem cells are derived. So you do the in vitro fertilizations, uh, you fuse them with the sperm cells, your egg, then they are totipendent on the third day, then the blastocyst stage on the fifth, then from the blastocyst, uh, you took the inner cell mass and then you uh, start culturing these pluripotent stem cells. This is from the placenta in the, in the, from the baby womb. Uh, you take the stem cells, then they could go to pancreatic, homopiatic, cardiomyocyte, neurons, hepatocytes. All are possible. This is the comparison of properties uh, of finite and continuous cell lines. Um, so, yeah. so, the common cell lines that are being day-to-day uh, -day used in the labs are human cell lines such as MCF, HL60, HAC293, HeLa cells. So they are most commonly used and the primate cell lines are Vero, Cos7, also CHO from hamster, SF9, SF21 insect cells are being widely used. And then after the cell culture, there is also organ culture where you grow your organs artificially and providing them all the nutrients that are required in, in, in the physi physiological body. So this is the artificial organs here you can see. Um, on the on the first second third three different organs being grown in these uh, cylindrical tubes um, yeah so this is all possible so thank you very much that was the basics to give you uh, a very nice you know overview that how cell cultures are being grown how you have to maintain the uh, away from the contaminations how you can do the stem cell culture how you can uh, maintain the basal media what are the ingredients that are required uh, what are the other things that are required in that and how to maintain sterile conditions so we have touched mostly uh, a b c d like total alphabets of most of the alphabets of your uh, cell culture uh, within this short period of um, span of time so um, I have shared the video of passaging the cells and also the principle of a cell culture now we'll take you the next 15 minutes uh, it's a it's a repetition of the same thing it's not much actually but still uh, i want to show you some cell cultures uh, how how we do it this is the second part of the same so cell culture why we do it we do it for the embryo culture primary human and animal cell culture stem and cancer cells uh, make proteins commercially scale antibody productions, monoclonals, so all these things are being done uh, in order to do so. Uh, for the cell culture, why we do it, this is a tool for animal cell biology and it can mimic the in vivo cell behavior um, and highly selective and defined environment is required to manipulate it. So cell culture is a fuzzy discipline in the tissue culture laboratory. 
Bench top should be kept clear and clean. Wearing a long sleeve lap coats minimizes contaminations from street clothing. Uh, wearing gloves, so we have discussed this. So most of the things we have discussed here, I will not repeat. So these are the primary cell cultures. The passaging we have discussed, you split them. Contact inhibition, if you do not uh, inhibit your cells, then they will overgrow like this. Um, these are the, some considerations you have to maintain. We have discussed this part also. Uh, we can disperse our tissues by mechanical, chemical and zymatic method. So mechanical is the mincing of uh, your shear sleeves. Chemical then zymatic is a trypsin pronase, uh, collagenase, dispase which can be a uh, combination of both and the cell culture environment this could be 8 well cell culture or 96 well uh, plate culture which allows the comparison of many culture condition samples often in triplicates and in 8 well culture also you can do experiments in triplicates in order to identify your results um, so cell culture surface has to be adhered, the cell has to be adhered on the surface. So it should have some charge like polyl lysine or we have to uh, coat our cell culture with collagen, laminin, gelatin, fibronectin so that our cells could adhere to the cell, to the cell culture plate easily. Uh, media we have discussed already, DMEM media, media in organic salts, trace elements, amino acids, vitamins. Serums we have discussed, fetal calf serum, horse serum, which has all these ingredients. The gas phase is two type oxygen and carbon dioxide. So in oxygen is aerobotic met metabolisms with uh, atmospheric of 20% and tissue level is, is between 1 to 7%. Uh, this is the CO2 incubator with the humidifications look like this. So pretty much clean and clear uh, air is being maintained. And you can grow multiple cell culture tubes in a day. So many people could work here. pH has to be controlled around 7. So that pH can affect the cell metabolism, growth rate, protein synthesis, availability of nutrients. So many things are being controlled with that. Temperature and humidity. So normal body temperature has to be maintained of around 37 degrees Celsius. And osmolarity and volume of media additives has to be taken care of also. And you have the ingredients now let us look at the procedures so that we have minimized contaminations so we have discussed various sources of contaminations also this is a class one cabinet uh, in which we have prepared your primary cell cultures that i use in my lab uh, during my phd so for for the removal of your tissue culture or anything is quite open and good to work and this is class two cabinets where you have your on on the top of it uv light also this is a laminar flow hood where oxygen, your, your, your air is being put up from inside only, it's not coming outside. So whatever the work is there, it's, it's remain inside of it. And here is the lab coat being hanging out on the right hand side. And here is in the yellow bag, your waste, all paper waste is being put, thrown up. And on the blue one, you throw the organic cell culture waste. So waste has to be also done separately. These are some plugs are also there in order to charge your um, pipettes, this pipette boy, this is called pipette boy to remove the media and, and, and work with it. So th things needs to be very much sterile when you're working. And that's the biological safety cabinet too with the HEPA filters and laminar airflow uh, with the vertical laminar airflow being uh, going inside there and then going up then in the filter like this and then this way. So human shed uh, particles of skins, bacteria, fungi, etc. all the time. So sitting or standing with no movement. So yeah. So aseptic techniques, um, UV light, 70% ethanol, uh, avoid repeated opening of bottles outside, manual contaminations of equipments, aerial contaminations. So this is a lab coat, gloves, tip does not touch the tube, holding the tube also. Pipet aid, so you should you should must take care that when you're using your pipet aid, pipet boy, that the medium should not go inside your tube. Otherwise, your media will be fully contaminated. So in earlier days, we used to suck all the medium up to up, which is not good, which makes your pipet boy not working. So this is for sucking. This is for uh, putting them out.
so that's how you use it <coughs> and these are the uh, micro filters which are like 0 0.2 mi micro membrane filters through which uh, you clean up uh, sterilize your media so that a small microorganism should not uh, go outside of it so this is this is showing some in vivo regenerations of Maya tubes in cell culture. Some examples are being shown by Maya blast for the seven days in culture under the face microscopy. So this is how your cell culture looks like. So this is an inverted microscope that's that is highly used in your cell culture tubes. You put your cell culture like this and you just check them under the microscope so that uh, you can see what is happening in your cell culture and it's good to go. And this is a CC, uh, C2, C12 mouse skeletal muscle culture cells after 24 hours of proliferation scattered on subculture in the high serum media with 20% FCS and DMA media. So that's how it looks. This is the differentiation of fusions of Maya tubes at 7 day fusion medium. You can see how overgrowth is there. There's a layer is there at the bottom of cells then the, and on the top the cells are started to grow which is not good somehow I feel when you're doing a cell culture the cell culture on the left side tube is the best one so far this is a hematocytometer where you count your cells from these uh, scares and you do not count cells on the lines outside you just mainly count cells inside the boxes so, so these are some adult uh, skeletal muscles primary cultures of containing the fibroblast and we maintain them in the 8-12 slide fix and stain for desmin <coughs> desmin protein and this is the skeletal uh, muscle cell line H2KB uh, cultured on the poly D lysine in 35 millimeter dishes and again stain for uh, desmin and here you can see uh, the blue one as the hoax cells these uh, means they are the nucleus and green is the desmin um, so C, C, C to C12 skeletal muscle cells very nicely shown so I hope um, it was all clear for today uh, Mainly the second slide was just to show you how uh, the cell culture looks like, what things you have to maintain, how it works all in all actually. So that's it for today. Um, I will show you, maybe I can show you in the last five minutes here. So this is my presentation from my PhD time, uh, sorry, master thesis time in 2012. So here I was working with the cancer metastasis. So this is the primary tumor cells which get invaded from it and then transfer, uh, there is a trans endothelial migration is happening, intravasation uh, through the blood, uh, blood vessels and they go move and they adhere out and then they go for trans endothelial migration, extravasation, then they invade it to the secondary tumor, the secondary organ. Um, so I was working with the rho GTPases. I got some SI RNAs of rho GTPases, and what we did was so we took this 96 well plate and we grow these Huvex cells in there with the EGM2 media. Upper chamber was empty, and the lower chamber is also empty. And there is a micro porous chamber of membrane of 8 micrometer. And then we knock down these with SI RNAs, and then we put cancer cells on the top. And then we remove everything from the top and then we check at the bottom of the membrane how many tumor cells have been transferred after the transfection of our neuron cells. So this is how um, your uh, Huvex cells looks like in the 96 well plate. So all the outside membrane it is being distorted mainly the inside cells they were fine. So we what we did we, um, we optimized them. So earlier there were 6,000 cells per well, then we uh, put them 8,000 by 8,000, it looks fine, better. 
and we just took these inside cells in order to work. Then we created some some like map that which SIRNS has to be there. We did it in duplicates with controls on the left and right. And this is how the Huex cell looks like when I stain them with calcine, which is a dye to watch your to check your cells whether they are present or not. So monolay looks fine. And these are the controls. So, so this is after the knockdown. Uh, these are the number of tumor cells actually which have been transmigrated. So you can see with the RAP GAF6, if I transfer them, very few are able to transfer. But in another case, many were able to do it. So in that case, RAP GAF6 seems to be idle uh, because it can, it doesn't let the tumor cells to transmigrate from it. So, and we found out some uh, good uh, numbers of genes that are present. So yeah like this so i cannot show you the results i just want to show you that how cell culture things could be beneficial for us and could be essential for us in order to get the results that we are looking for if you have any questions you can ask or you can write me in the chat box of the whatsapp group i will be happy to reply so that's it for today um so we are done with the with the introduction part so far uh, nicely and we did yesterday microscopy and today we are done with the um, cell culture animal cell culture so whosoever wants to go through the lecture who are not able to attend they can attend it uh, via this link so thank you very much take care bye bye